Hey everybody, today we're talking more about the power of a statistical test. This time we're going to do a couple of examples um, that rely on the binomial distribution. They're both going to deal with this situation. We have a fortune teller that claims that they can guess the gender of an unborn child by laying hands on the mother's belly. They are going to test their ability using a sample of 16 babies. The null hypothesis is going to be they're just making random guesses, and the alternative hypothesis is that they can actually do better than just random chance. They are going to choose to reject the null hypothesis if they get at least 12 successes in that 16-baby trial. As we go forward, we're going to want to interrogate that decision a little bit. The main two questions, though, that we want to talk about, what is the power um, of the test? We want to sketch the power function, evaluate it at a couple values. And then we're going to want to talk about sample size. So if they need a certain power level, a certain significance level, what kind of sample do they need? So as we're doing the power function of a test, let's start with a special case. Let's start with the probability of a type 1 error. This is alpha. So here we're talking about assuming the null hypothesis is true, p equals 0.5, and then computing the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis, y greater than or equal to 12. So here we're in a binomial distribution. We're doing 16 draws with a probability of success of 0.5. So what are the chances that we get at least 12? So here we're going to use the binomial PMF. We're going to evaluate it for 12 successes, 13 successes, etc., up to 16. Add all that up, and we get 0.038. So that's the probability of a type 1 error, the significance level of the test. Not bad. Let's generalize this. The power function is going to be computed exactly in the same way, except now we don't assume the null hypothesis. Instead, we say, what's the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis for different true values of p? So we're now in b of 16 comma p instead of b of 16 comma 0.5. We compute it exactly the same way. We take the binomial PMF from 12 to 16, we add all those up, we get a function of p. Let's graph it. So it's not surprising that it's increasing. As the true probability of success on particular guesses increases, the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis increases. Also notice that when p is 0.5, in other words, when the null hypothesis is true, the power function gives us um, the 0.038, exactly the significance level of the test. Question two. Let's think about sample size. So we're specifying a significance level of alpha equals 0.01 and a power level of 0.90 when p equals 0.65. In other words, a 65% chance, I'm sorry, a 90% chance of rejecting the null hypothesis when the person's true probability of guessing the gender of the baby is 65%. How big a sample do we need? So we have two pieces of information, and we're going to need to compute them both. Alpha and beta are both probabilities. We're going to have a couple of probability calculations. So um, we're going to have some critical region, y greater than or equal to c, where we're going to reject the null hypothesis. c is going to depend on n. It's unknown right now. So let's just specify to some value, write down some probability statements, and get an equation out of it. To write down any kind of probability statement, we're going to have to know a little bit about the distribution um, of y. So it's going to depend, of course, on n, the number of trials. It's still going to be binomial. We're going to have n trials and a 0.5 probability of success under the null hypothesis. So we can compute mean and variance. Mean is np, so 0.5n, and variance is npq, so 0.25n. Again, remember, when we're talking about alpha, we're assuming the null hypothesis is true. Now, we're going to assume that n is large enough to use a normal approximation. If at the end of this calculation we come back with a small n, we're going to want to revisit that assumption. Um, but let's start by, by working that way. So we know that alpha is 0.01. That's the probability that y comes back greater than or equal to c in this binomial distribution. Let's write that using a normal approximation. 0.01 is going to be the probability of randomly getting a z value greater than or equal to the z value of y equals c. So that's what we're seeing here. 
So it's the C minus the expected value over the standard deviation. So alpha equals 0.01 probability of Z greater than or equal to something means that we have 0.01 area to the right of that Z value. So 0.99 area to the left. So I'm doing the inverse normal CDF of 0.99. That's where that 2.326 is coming from. So here I have a relation between C and A. Now let's think about beta. We're told that when P is 0.65, the power level is going to be 0.90. So that's going to be the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when the true probability of success is 0.65. So the probability of getting a Y value in that critical region when the probability P is 0.65 should be 0.90. So again, we use a normal approximation. We say that that probability in the binomial distribution is going to be the probability of getting a z-value um, at random greater than or equal to the corresponding z-value for y equals c. So we do the same procedure as before. We do an inverse normal calculation, this time doing it on 0.1, and we get this relation, negative 1.28 equals c minus 0.65n over the square root of 0.2275n. So we now have two equations relating c and n, and we can solve those two simultaneously, and we get n equals 139.8, which, as always, we need to round up. Conclusion, the fortune teller is going to have to have a sample of size 140, they're going to need to guess the gender of 140 babies to get this significance level and this power level.